All right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I am Chris Gavish, and uh, we're going to be talking about B Corp today. What is a B Corp um, and what you might learn from B Corps. I'm here with uh, three other B Corp business owners, um, and they'll introduce themselves in just a minute. But um, I uh, am the co-founder of Two Octobers. We're a digital marketing agency based in Denver, and we've been a B Corp for four years. And before we get started, I would love to sort of know where you guys are at with your B Corp interest and B Corp knowledge. So if you don't mind self-identifying with your hand, um, who knows nothing about B Corp, okay? <laughs> and a little bit about B Corp. Dr. Fred for like three seconds about it. Okay, this is exponential growth for you today. Yeah. Um, so, and how many of you heard have heard of the B Impact Assessment? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. A good number of it. Um, and how many of you have um, started or finished the B Impact Assessment? Okay, great. Um, anybody who's a B Corp besides the people in front here? Okay, terrific. Well, welcome. I, I mean, we're really excited to share with you and um, some of what we have gained from um, becoming a B Corp and, and part of the B Corp community. Um, what we're going to do today is um, I am going to have these guys introduce themselves. Then I'll share some slides for about 10 minutes that just tries to go through the basics. There's like in everything, there's a little bit of lingo to know. There's some um, information about what the movement is and where we're going that I'll share. Um, we are not represent representatives of the certification, right? So you can ask us questions about our experience, but if you're going to ask us like really detailed rules questions, we may or may not have the answer. Just like Good Business Colorado, like... It's a community, and, and we want to help um, move the community forward, and so that's why we're standing in front of you today. Um, so then we'll have um, some panel questions uh, and some time for you guys to ask us questions and sort of direct the conversation like you'd like to. So please introduce yourself, Dave. Sure, thanks. Hi, I'm Dave Mathias. I'm one of the founders of Free Range Beehives. Uh, we're a social impact company, but what we do on a daily basis is engage businesses to host honeybees. Uh, we take care of them for the companies that we work with. And then we use the bees as a tool to teach about the importance of bees and why bees need to be supported here in Colorado. Um, we are right now a Colorado company focused just on companies in Colorado. Uh, however, in the coming year, we'll be moving into San Diego, Salt Lake City, and Kansas City. And I'm Karen Hoskin. I own Montagna Distillers in Crested Butte, Colorado. And I have uh, been a distillery owner and distiller uh, for 15 years now. So we were one of the first five distilleries in Colorado. I know they're now like 700,000. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and um, yeah, we've been a B Corp for seven years now. We went through our first recertification. Um, actually, so six years. So we're sort of toward the end of our second round. And um you know, like one a good example is that when we went out to find some SEO help, we went straight to October. So we go out and look for other B Corps to collaborate with as well. Uh, my name is John Milgram. I am the uh, founder and managing partner of Milgram and Destin. We are a full service law firm. Um, we're based mostly out of Colorado. We have clients all over um, and attorneys as far as New York and California, uh, but mostly mostly in Colorado. Um, we've been in B Corp for three years, just going through our recertification right now, submitting our documents next month. And yeah, really excited to be here. All right. So I want to introduce you to um, what everything B Corp is. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about what B Lab is, um, what the B Corp movement is, what the value of certification is, what businesses um, find valuable about it, and what the certification process looks like itself. So first, let's talk about B-Lab and the B-Corp movement. So um, this is a bit of terminology, but so B-Lab is the nonprofit that runs the B-Corp certification. It is a international company. There's a national arm of it, um, but they're in charge of what is the certification um, and, and keeping it running. Uh, so the B Corp is actually the name of the certification. So you become a certified B Corp. And the whole point of, of what B Corp is about is really about moving business from shareholder capitalism in which 
any of you guys are business owners or part of a business, your articles of incorporation say, or whatever you have, I'm, not, I'm an LLC, so I don't have incorporation documents, but say that you are in business to benefit your shareholders. So your fiscal responsibility is to make your shareholders money. What this movement tries to do is expand the definition of capitalism to include all stakeholders. And I'm going to talk about the legal uh, documentation change that that requires of certified B Corps, but it's a really important difference in what we're trying to do. My business is not in business just to make me money. It is to balance the needs of all of the stakeholders that we run into as are theirs. So B Corp is a uh, growing movement. There are 7,000 certified B Corps across the, uh, the, uh, the world um, in a humongous variety of industries, over 90 countries, all around the same goal. And it's really increasing. Um, the number of businesses increase, is increasing a lot year over year. It includes a lot of small businesses like ours, a lot of larger businesses too, and well-known good brands that you've probably heard of, Bombas, um, some Colorado-involved uh, companies like Techstar, uh, New Belgium. Uh, so there's a lot of different companies. I think there's 140 in Colorado. So what are some of the benefits that businesses um, see? So first of all, what being a certified B Corp means is that we hold ourselves as businesses um, held to some of the highest social and environmental standards worldwide. Um, and we're trying to use this model of, of business as a force for good. You're familiar with other certifications. So uh, USDA Organic, Fair Trade Certified. These are product certifications. They certify the product how it got to market, um, how, how it was produced, things like that. B Corporation is a wider certification. It certifies a company. So it looks deeper into all of the practices of different companies. Um, and that's one of the reasons that it supports so many different industries, because it actually customizes the, the, the questions that you have to answer are a little bit customized depending on what kind of business you are. So as a services business, I have very few suppliers. So the supplier portion of this certification doesn't count as much as it would for another kind of business. And that's one of the ways that it, it, it supports a bigger tent of lots of different industries. So some of the benefits that we see as um, becoming a B Corp um, and being part of the movement, one of the ones that I feel really has affected our business a lot is benchmarking where we're at and improving our impact. So being able to say and know exactly where we are and what we could do to improve our impact. To become B Corp cert, once you become B Corp certified, you have to recertify every three years. So it's a very specific and tangible way of going back and saying, well, how are we doing now? Are we still doing the things we did three years ago? I'll tell you, some of them we weren't still doing, right? We fell back in some areas. But we went ahead in a lot of other areas. Um, so I, I really appreciate that accountability and encouragement for continuing to improve. Um, there's also just a lot to be valued about joining a community of leaders that all share similar values. And I get that from Good Business Colorado as well. Um, but that's definitely a part of being a B Corp that's really valuable. Um, there, You have the opportunity for better marketing and brand trust. Um, B Corp has been, I should say, B Lab, the organization, has been working on building the uh, brand recognition of the B Corp brand. Um, and it has now, I believe, over 60% brand recognition in people between 18 and 40. So really strong brand recognition. We rely a lot on some of our larger business partners to help push that brand forward. So you'll see it on supermarket products. Danone, Horizon, Milk, I think, if I'm not saying the wrong thing. Um, uh, you see those brands out there. Oh, um, attracting and engaging talent. So it is helpful. In my business, I find it as a shortcut for hiring. If I interview somebody who knows what a B Corp is, that's awesome. If they don't, and the second interview, they go, I'm so excited. This is, I went down a rabbit hole. I'm like, you are for us. And if they never bring it up again, I'm like, maybe you're not for us. Um, so it's a good way to engage talent as well. 
Um, another big benefit is protecting the mission of the business for the long term. Because we're making some structural changes to how we define ourselves as a business, Those uh, that mission needs to be locked in even if we get new investors, even if we change ownership. That remains locked in. And then it also gives you the opportunity to raise value-aligned capital. So what does the certification process look like? First of all, it's free. Anybody can go to app.beimpactassessment.net and try it out yourself. It takes a long time to go through. It's complicated, but it's interesting. And and I think it'll give you some new ideas um, for your business. There are five components of the B Impact Assessment. So these are the areas of each business that it's it's asking about, asking detailed, invasive questions about what your business practices are. But this is part of the reason that this is such a thorough and impactful certification because it's deep. And it's across a lot of aspects of your business. So it starts with governments, governance, um, which is about what your mission statement is, whether you have an ethics policy, things like that. Um, it looks at your worker policies around compensation, paying everyone a living wage, for example, what your ongoing training and education practices are, how you're impacting the community through civic engagement. Um, through your justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion policies, how you are being a good steward of the environment, and how you're interacting and supporting customers. So some of the concepts I've heard elsewhere today um, about uh, having an advisory board of your customers is something that you can get credit for in the customer section of the certification, for example. So a certified, so here's another terminology mix up that we sometimes hear. Certified B Corporation is a third party certification that comes from B Lab. A benefit corporation is a legal structure for a business that is, I'm going to say, on par. We have a lawyer here, so he can explain it better and don't take me at my word, but uh, on par with being an LLC or a corporation. You do not have to be a benefit corporation in order to be a certified B Corporation. But what you do have to do is, as a certified B Corporation, is change the structure of your operating agreement, as I was saying, to say that we are in business for all of our shareholders and not just our stakeholders. And that's the lock part of it that um, that's the, the right now, the one non-negotiable, non-negotiable must have requirement of getting B Corp certification. The other things, like if you don't have um, a customer advisory board, that's okay. Get points for it. You don't have it. You don't get those points. That's fine. So what does that assessment look like specifically? So here's a question in our assessment around paid secondary caregiver leave. What secondary parental leave policies are available to your workers, either through your company or a government program? And one of the things I'd love for you to take away from this session is just an interest in going in and looking at this, because I found it fascinating as a roadmap for business success. When we started the B Corp assessment, we had, I don't remember, maybe two to five weeks for paid leave for um, for having a baby. But if you were the secondary parent, whatever that means, um, then you got less vacation. And so we started to think about it. Well, what's the point of that? I mean, I know I have given birth. I know it's a little bit of work, but um, <laughs> but you know, the, we all know that parental bond is important, and that the more men who have and actually take parental leave leads to more equitable society. All those sort of things. So, in fact, as part of this process, we went ahead and expanded our parental leave, but also decided we weren't going to differentiate between primary and secondary caregivers. I didn't even mention what does that mean for our, you know, my my colleague who are two women and neither of them gave birth to me. Like what is what does this even mean? So use the assessment as a way of evaluating your own processes and thinking about a roadmap for going forward. So it costs money. <laughs> It's not my fee schedule, but it, just so you know, how much money does it cost? This fee schedule is up on their website. Um, once you're certified, you pay a yearly fee to um, keep to advertise yourself as a certified B Corp, um, and the fees 
start out at $2,000 and they scale up. And as I said, you have to be recertified every three years. I think that is everything that I was going to share. So just really trying to give you the basics before we get into the conversation here um, with our panelists. So let me ask you guys our starting question, um, which is why did you decide to be a, become a B Corp? And why don't you start, John? Sure. Yeah. Um, it was really important to me to have that mission line. And it took a couple of years for us to get there because, you know, as a startup business, thinking about offering paid rental leave when you don't know if you're going to be able to pay rent next month is a little bit intimidating. Um, but for us, I think it really kind of struck at the core of who we are. And every attorney at our firm knows what it is, knows why it's important to us. Um, and I think it makes us a better company. We went to a conference a week or two ago where really the primary thrust was to learn from other really good companies about good practices that they're doing and how they're treating their stakeholders being you know, employees in the community around them really well. Um, and every year, I think we get a little bit better as a result of that kind of osmosis of ideas. Um, so for us, it was really about mission lock and being kind of a good corporate steward to our employees and the people around us. You know, I, I think we became a B Corp because I don't trust people's claims about sustainability. <laughs> I was that person who would be like, really, you know, tell me what you're doing in terms of sustainability. And, you know, if all they had was like, I don't know, a solar panel outside the back door, I was like, okay, but what else, you know? And I wanted verification. And so once I learned about the B Corp, I would go shop the B Corp. So you can go to the website of the B Lab and search for socks. And you'll they'll tell you all the B Corps that make wool socks, let's say, or you can shop for beer, or you can shop for, you know, just whatever it is. And that's what I started doing. And I was like, all right, you know, because I felt like we were doing all the things that B Corps do. And so then I sat down and did the assessment. And we came out on the first, um, you know, we were certified at 120 points, which to become a B Corp, you get certified at 80 points. And the only thing I had to change, you know, other than embedding the documents in our company operating agreement was we didn't have a whistleblower policy. So we added a whistleblower policy, published it to our staff, and then became a B Corp. And then we became a best for the world B Corp, which means that we were in in the top 10% of B Corps. So within inside the B Corp, there's even not a hierarchy, but like a structure that you can aspire to, to be an inspiring B Corp to other B Corps. And that was something that I didn't know existed until it happened to me. I was like, what is this? And um, we went to Los Angeles to the annual B Corp conference and got really honored about it. And I was that was like a moment for me of, Okay, so it's embedded in the DNA of the company, but now I don't have to I don't have to worry that people think I'm greenwashing them when I say we are a very sustainable company in terms of the how we operate with our employees, where we bank, you know, literally everything that we do as a company, um, I don't have to feel like they might question, they might wonder. It's verified and it's audited and it's like, yeah, it's the, the B Corp says it's says it's true. And they really put us through our paces to make sure that we weren't just making it up. And I think at Free Range Beehives, uh, my partner and I both come out of um, software uh, startups and worked with venture capitalists, which is a soul-sucking experience if you've ever done it. Um, So I think when we sat down to formulate our ideas, we really saw B Corp as an opportunity. I think we decided that we wanted to build a company that was in, in alignment with all of the things that B Corp represents. and so. For us, it was really a handbook of, you know, making sure we had discussions about what what do we each value and what do we want to, what do we want our company to look like in five years? We don't want it to look like these companies that we have built in the past, which are very much not focused on things that are you know that our values aligned with. And so, I think for us, it was it was an opportunity. Um, We did identify um, also, I think, an advantage, which was to get started almost from the day we began our company. So, you know, I think Chris alluded to it, John, as well, that, you know, we didn't have employees. So when the the questionnaire says, do you have an employee handbook? And what does it say? We were able to say, well, we don't have employees, so we don't have a handbook. When we do have employees, of course, we will have a handbook. And so there were some opportunities to 
become involved early on at the inception of our company as opposed to maybe when we're you know older and more mature as a business. Yeah, and so talk a little bit about that process of becoming a B Corp, of going through the certification process. What was hard? Harder than you thought it might be? What was easier than you thought it might be, David? Yeah, uh, luckily in my uh, business, I was not personally involved in the assessment process. So I know that many companies either sort of do it themselves, which I know to be a very long and arduous task, um, or they oftentimes hire uh, somebody to help them that has experience or consulting background in, in doing that. Um, I know it was you know very involved. Um, we at the time were officing at the Alliance Center downtown, uh, which is how we got involved in Good Business Colorado. Um, and so there were a lot of resources there and people there that could help us understand the assessment, what we needed to do. But again, I, personally, I did not have a day-to-day involvement with, with filling out our assessment. And there are the, the community um, is very giving. So if you find yourself filling something out, you have a question, reach out um, to be... So Be Local Colorado is the name of the um, local organization of B, B Corps, sort of a... a there's a happy hour next week that everybody's invited to. If you'd like to go to BeLocalColorado.com. But you can email hello at BeLocalColorado.com or come to one of those networking events um, and get get answers and ideas from the community. We'd be happy to. But um, John, Karen, anything you want to add about the process of certification? Yeah, I would just love to, you know, so in recertifying, one of the things that was really noticeable to me is that they've made major changes between the first and second certifications. So I came in um, six and a half years ago under a very different assessment, and it got much, much harder over that time. So one of the examples of that is that I... my So I'm a manufacturer, and you trigger a whole other arm of the B Corp when you're a manufacturer. So um, I had to do a significant supplier survey, like a, a lot of different things that many B Corp, like a, a law firm wouldn't have to do. And so it was really intense um, because in the United States, sugarcane, which is my main ingredient, is uh, that you're not allowed to grow GMO sugarcane. And I get all my sugarcane from one family group of growers in Louisiana. And so I, before I could say that I was non-GMO. But on the second one, even though it's not legal to grow sugarcane in the United States that is GMO, I still have to certify my sugarcane source as non-GMO. So it's way, it's more stringent than it was. Um, so I lost some points for that the second time around, but it's it was not a big deal. So now I know when I go to recertify, I have to certify my sugarcane growers. As. And how does one go about certifying a supplier? Well... That's a, that can be a challenge. Um, I have to convince them that it's in both of our best interests. So and so they have to apply for certification. You're buying yeah. certified supplier. Yeah. yeah, they would have to want to do it. But they've been super awesome and cooperative, luckily. But would there be a case where, like, if your suppliers are not helpful, that it would affect your ability to come on board? Is yes. that something that exists? Yeah. So I mean, she said, you know, we're a law firm, and we don't have suppliers of raw goods. We need computers and legal databases. And those are typically not provided locally, sustainably. Um, you know, find me a biodegradable computer and buy it tomorrow. Um, maybe I would, would probably biodegrade, but that's another story. But there are ways you can make up points in other areas, right? So when we buy swag, when I get my name tag or something like that, yeah, we can find a local supplier. But Westlaw, they can't find somebody who's local and sustainable for that. And so we can make up for that in other ways by having you know, better parental leave policies or um, you know, a more robust whistleblower policy, those things that we mentioned. So you can kind of spread yourself across the, the five different pillars and figure out where you can get points. And it, it does kind of, you know, you're going through the survey and you're kind of like, oh, maybe you can get some points here. But it ends up kind of um, spiraling into something better. Um, you create some policy that you didn't really think you might need. And then two years later, it comes into play. Oh, I'm really glad we had that. That was, was great. So 
it, it's not kind of one size fits all. You can. We're all very different companies. Yeah. Just like if, if you didn't have the best of all worlds and your suppliers were totally on board, you could make up for it in other ways. Exactly. Right. I still got a very high score without that GM, non GMO certification, but it, it was less high than it had been, which I took as like a sort of assault on my soul because I was like, <laughs> I'm not a 99 B Corp. I'm 120 B Corp. <laughs> like you get on the backside of this and it's like you open the door to the back room where all the B Corps are doing the coolest you've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And you go to hang out with them and you're like, wait, what? You know, and it's that to me is the bonus that I had really no vision of on the other side. Like you walk into that room with B Corps and talk about packaging. And it's like the most exciting room I've ever been in. Or you walk into a room where they're talking about how to provide financial wellness services to your employees. And I'm like, you can do this? Like, I could help them to calculate whether their rent is the right proportion of their income, you know, just like endless things. And so that's that to me has been... It's not about what it, what I do facing the world anymore. It's about looking into the B Corp and being like, how can we all inspire each other to be so much better. Is that score reflected? I mean, I'm thinking of other certifications like need certification for buildings, for example, as a silver, gold, platinum. Is there... It's published. So you can go okay. look up on, on the same B Corp directory, US B Corp directory, you can find our names, a little bit about us, and what our scores were. Um, so you can see the, the B Corp score for any certified B Corp. That's one of our transparency commitments. And you can see it by category. So those five categories, um, you can see what we scored in each of those categories. So you can say, oh, well, this company might have had trouble with their you know, significant supplier assessment, but man, they, their governance and their customer facing stuff is really good. Is the B local thing certified B Corporation supported or is it something that's entirely put together by the by the B Corp? certified companies themselves the latter so it's a it's a local organization driven and supported and managed by the b corps in our area and i'm a service business so i have you know i don't also don't have any real raw products or suppliers of raw products my experience has been that most of our points come from you know DEI efforts and community involvement we're a te- we're basically an agricultural company that uh, has an education component so we get a most of our points from those categories as opposed to, you know, as opposed to others. And uh, thank you for sharing sort of, uh, Karen, about how opening the door to being in the same room of some of these other companies. I mean, I, I at the last national retreat, like you get to be in the room with Dr. Bronner's and Bombas and all these com- Ben and Jerry's companies that really have that kind of credentials. And and really, you belong there, right? Which is also sort of blows my mind that I belong in that room. But what are some of the other benefits that, um, John, that you have experienced from becoming a B Corp? Um, I mean, you mentioned before recruiting and, and, and hiring and kind of that cultural look. I think that with the workforce that we have, the social mission is really important. And, and as Karen mentioned, having that certification is really kind of the gold standard of saying, like, we take this seriously. Um, we've achieved this goal. and mm-hmm. Uh, we're very committed to it. Um, that's been really significant. Um, and then I think, honestly, the, that osmosis is just continuing to get better and learn from other other uh, B Corps. You know, she talked about the financial portion. And that has fostered some really good conversations internally about um, what we can do better. So, um, yeah, I think uh, culture lock, getting people in the door, um, keeping people on board and kind of focused... Um, on, on what our mission is, engaging more stakeholders. We have a ton of pro bono work, and that's kind of rooted in, in B Corp um, ideology as well. So, If I was going out to look for a law firm, I'd probably search the B Corp and find someone that was in Colorado. And then, you know, that's important to me to know that the law firm or the accounting firm or the marketing company or the web designer or, you know, whatever it is, that they are aligned with the same values. And that's just a snap of a way to figure it out and not wonder if they're if they're telling me stories. One of the best examples of, you know, what you were talking about is I was I went to the the retreat and 
I got to hear the CEO of Patagonia speak. And I had just been in this like deep internal struggle about exactly how political to be in my community because as a B Corp, like we care about Jedi work. We care about, you know, making sure that our schools are safe. We care about all these things about our community. But then you come out in support of a candidate and it becomes really complicated really quickly. Well, listening to the CEO of Patagonia speak and, and describe all of their very specific political action work that they had been doing. And she, at the end, this was the previous CEO. She said, do you want to hear how this has affected our revenues? Mm -hmm. She's like, we're up 64%. So if you're sitting here worried that your political action is going to harm your revenues, it's going to harm your reputation. She's like, let us be the example because we are nationally known and it's a lot of competition in our, in our, area. So that was really inspiring to me. <laughs> David, any benefits? Yeah, I would just add, I think all, all of what everyone has shared, um, for, for us, I think too, um, the benefit was a benefit of relevance. So as you started with Chris, um, we sell, literally, we sell beehives to businesses. And if I'm talking to somebody who's a CFO of a larger company, you know, he or she may be you know, in their 60s or 70s, and they kind of they kind of look at you like, well, I, I get it, but I don't really get it. Like, I'm not sure I quite understand. And yet, you talk to the 40, you know, the the 60 percent of younger people um, that know about it and value B Corp. Uh, those are the people that will be making decisions about whether they want bees uh, at their company someday. And so, I think. It gives us almost instant credibility and relevance to a lot of the companies that we talk to. Was there a question out? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and I apologize. I yes, I write late, so I don't know if this question is but I'm just wondering how we feel the people it is who become certified uh, as a B Corp and how we do set that process. So uh, it is a rigorous process. So I would say it is difficult um, it, from. Our, my business was 10, nine years old when we started the process and it took us a year to sort of brush things off and improve things and get to the point where we could submit. Um, and I think John said two years about that process. How long was your process, Karen? For me? Um, the first time we went through it, we did it in about four months, mm -hmm. um, but it was a very high priority for us as a company. So I allocated a staff person to it about... 20 hours a week, you know, luckily we had most everything already there. I think if you have to build a lot of policies and build a lot of practices, it takes a lot longer. In terms of inclusivity, I have to say it's one of the most beautiful uh, communities I've ever participated in, in terms of inclusivity, because it's a priority of the B Corp. The B Corp is like, we're not just going out to get the, you know, the, ex the expensive, fancy companies that can afford us. They are going out to find uh, minority-led companies and you know companies that are doing things in their industry that are really disrupting previous bad practices that need to be disrupted. And, um, and then when they do their work within the B Corp community, they're really working to give visibility to people who have overcome tremendous you know, barriers or hurdles to get where they are. Like one of the coolest companies I heard heard speak in the B Corp world is, geez, I'm gonna forget the name of it. But anyway, they all of their employees are ex incarcerated, and they yes, yes, yes. Um, what was it? Naughty time. K N O T T Y time. And it was actually there are two or three companies that were speaking at the same time, and one of them is like a Yerba Buena or like a oh god, I'm so sorry. Anyway. Yerba Mate. <laughs> I'm like, what country am I in right now? Um, and, um, but like, so companies that are doing really innovative things to overcome challenges in the much wider world than just, we want to make something and we hope you'll make us a B Corp because we do it. There's also um, B Lab, which is the organization that runs the certification. A couple years introduced um, a program that they call Level L E V E L. So recognizing that the cert, I mean, we're talking about significant effort to put in just to get the certification, right? So recognizing that um, there are uh, business 
businesses that don't have that kind of resources to put it into it in the first place um, started this program, which takes businesses through the process. They It's an application process to get in. Um, and I think the entire cohort last year was women of color, uh, business leaders, business owners. Um, it takes them through the whole process to get them to certification. So there, it is an impressive how the community, but also B-Lab as an organization, the multi-layered ways they're trying to address some of the systemic problems that we all try and dismantle, and yet we all participate in and exist in. So, yeah. Yeah. What sorts of resources did you put into the certification? I'm thinking like, I'm going kind to of guess that you guys aren't like multi-hundred person companies that like whole departments dedicated towards this, but like, did you put it in like your finance management or did you take it on yourselves? I mean, like, and then also does, I mean, it's sort of just answer that I guess with the B Corp providing some, or B Lab providing some sort of support, but are there, do they offer other things like pay for them to consult on so there are independent um, certifications consultants. Um, and if, if I'm sure if you come to a B local event, you'll find one because they're there networking to find you. Um, and that's a really valuable service. And they can help, I mean, almost in a similar way to how DEI consultants really help you move the ball forward, right? Sometimes that's what you need. Somebody to help you move the ball forward, not because your heart's not in it, but because the coordination across departments is challenging. So in our business, we already had a model where we, um, every quarter, come together and form cross-disciplinary teams to work on something. And we just devoted it to this. And that was really helpful because we then also baked in consensus and understanding of what it is. And everybody came out of it having contributed to, you know, somebody wrote a policy and somebody researched other policies and things like that. But it was also a good way to distribute the work. I did most of the recertification myself, and I would say that it took probably 40 hours of work. So, and yeah, we had three of us working on it. And I think it took two years, not because this, the questionnaire took so long. It took two years because we literally could not do it. Like we couldn't achieve the, the score. It didn't. Um, you know, I mentioned the, the parental leave policy. We couldn't pay them. We would have gone out of business. Um, and so it kind of, I really appreciate the exercise because we looked at the assessment when we first started the firm and a lot of it was aspiration. It was, this is what we're going to build towards. This is what we're going to make. Um, and it, it took a while to get there. It wasn't that it took two years to fill out a survey. It took two years to build the policies, to to develop kind of the, the cash reserve to be able to um, do some of the things that we wanted to do. But we had that trajectory. It set our goals. And I think that was a really valuable process to have, whether you did it with a consultant or whether you did it internally. Um, I know Chris mentioned, go look at the look at the assessment. Honestly, at the end of the day, being a B Corp is great, but it's not about having that little B. It's about being a good company that does these things and having this third party say, here are things that good companies do. Um, it's a good roadmap. <laughs> so let's take one more question and then I'll have these guys um, finish with a round robin question. But did, what's in the, yes. what, I can't read oh, your name. It, it was DJ. She asked my question. Okay, great. Is there another question? I got like nine, but all right. Let me find it. No, no, but, but I, I can wait. I can hold off. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and please do. I mean, you can tell we all have a lot of passion for this topic. So we'd love for you to grab us um in back in the main room after this. I think we have a break between three and three thirty, but and we'll stay here if we can, because there's not a session afterwards. So we can stay all the way to three. Okay. Um, that's good. So we all come behind, come together as B Corps behind some of these principles that I've described. But one of the things that B Lab in the U.S. and Canada um, has shared with the community is it's something that they call the theory of change. And so there are really three pillars of um, of uh, advocacy um, that they really want us all to be behind and really is a no-brainer for, for anybody who's interested in this kind of stuff. And so I want to tell you what those three pillars are and then have our, our panelists share some programs that they are currently doing and then also some programs that you're hoping to do in the next year um, going forward that contribute to these changes. So the, the kind of societal change that all B Corps are hoping to uh, develop are around climate climate justice. And so we call it climate justice, not just like climate advocacy or climate change mitigation or something like that, recognizing that there's a um, DEI component to climate justice. 
um, racial equity and a stakeholder driven economy. And hopefully that that stakeholder driven economy being an economy driven by in relationship to how we affect all of the systems around us, not just the shareholders behind us. So climate justice, racial equity, and a stakeholder driven economy. Share a program that you do now, Karen, we'll start with you and something that you're hoping to do as you continue to grow and succeed in this world. Um, so one of the things, I mean, anybody who's been in Colorado for a minute knows that our mountain communities are extremely non-diverse. Um, they're expensive to live in. Their affordable housing programs have been challenged. Um, I could go on for days. But when I moved to Crested Butte 12 years ago, my community was appalling to myself. And I had to choose. I'm like, am I going to be in a community where I can ski and mountain bike and educate my kids you know, in a fairly innovative curriculum and sacrifice a community that I think has equity building going on? Um, or am I going to be part of a, a real change making go, uh, in my community? So if you stepped into Crested Butte today versus five years ago, you would notice a hundred things that have happened that have made tremendous change. And it's been, you know, when businesses are pushing those kinds of changes and you have 47 employees or whatever, the governments pay attention. The police department pays attention. We changed our entire uh, police department's uniforms. We changed how they do their uh, local patrolling. We changed inter- interactions with the school. We got equity labs into our school district. We um, are working with a, with an organization called Melanin Mountain Project. We just last Sunday had a huge fundraiser for them, uh, which is about supporting mountain bikers and backpackers and you know people who are recreating who typically historically have not always felt welcome in the backcountry. Um, and so it's a thousand levels. So that's been one of, you know, we got Black Lives Matter printed down the entire central corridor of Crested Butte um, at that moment when it was happening in the world. And that was a huge thing to get done because we had a fight on our hands and it was, we, we exposed the underbelly of some pretty ugly stuff in the process, which turned out to be a good thing. Um, in terms of looking forward, in our little cone of silence and uh, confidentiality, I'm in the process. Of, um, I'm in the process of selling my company to my employees. So, um, yeah, don't tell yet because we're making a formal announcement in the next couple of weeks. But it's been something I've wanted to do from the very start. I was really inspired by Kim Jordan at uh, at New Belgium. I like cried all the way through her episode of um, how I built this. If you haven't listened to it. Uh, I had to pull over on the side of the road because I was crying so hard I couldn't see. So yeah, really inspired by what she did. And so anyway, that's coming. Sorry to speak so long. Um, we started the BIPOC Farmers Legal Fund, which commits hundreds of hours of free legal services to land back movements um, for BIPOC farmers from Louisiana to Washington to New York. Um, we work with the Rocky Mountain Immigrant Advocacy Network, where we've achieved citizenship for over two dozen refugees from South and Central America. We work with an organization called Burning Through Pages, uh, which supports literacy advocacy in um, Title I schools here in Colorado. Um, I mean, I could go on for a, quite a while. Each attorney at our firm commits to doing at least, at least 50 pro bono hours of legal work every year. Um, and we don't choose the gods. We're completely agnostic as to what people want to do. Um, but that is very much a pillar. And so when you talk about B Corp, like locking in that mission, that is something you sign up to, you sign up to be an attorney. Uh, for, yeah, it's been really transcendental. And I think really proud, especially of the asylum work that has been done there. And some really cool stuff. And when you hear the stories of some of these people, it's, it's profound. Uh, and what are we doing looking forward? We recently attended a B Corp conference and... We are a remote law firm, and so I think it's very hard to track our environmental footprint. We don't have a lot of consumables, but we do still consume. Um, so tracking our greenhouse gas and emissions and trying to offset those is going to be a priority looking forward. Into. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I can be brief. Um, at Free Range Beehives, we started uh, initially with wanting to donate a certain amount of, of hides to the community. So... Um, 
giving an organization or an underserved community a beehive or several beehives is not very expensive, but the time that comes with then taking care of those beehives and potentially transferring the knowledge of how to care for those bees over the course of a year or two years or three years is tends to be very expensive. Uh, and so we we are proud and we, we identify usually an organization uh, per year that we can engage with in that in that manner. Um, most recently, we have uh, put hives in at Focus Points Family Resource Center, and we work in cooperation with Huerta, Urbana, and Slow Food. And if you think about what happens at this organization, uh, it's in Swansea uh, neighborhood, so an, an, underser- an underserved, uh, widely recognized as a food desert. They grow tons and tons and tons of vegetables. We provide the bees that pollinate. All those vegetables then go into uh, food preparation and education around um, healthy eating, you know, healthy food prep. Uh, and it's it's somewhat of a circular, um, you know, circular uh, economy, if you will. So we're, we're excited about that. And, and others like that, we work with and incarcerate uh, folks who are just coming out of an incarceration, a different organization called TOSA. Uh, we work with veteran uh, a vets organization to teach them beekeeping, uh, and and within beekeeping, you may imagine that there's a lot of uh, therapy and a lot of calmness that comes with that that activity. Looking forward, uh, we also bottle all of our honey for our clients. So Google, who's a client of ours here in Colorado, will receive all of the honey that their bees make, and there's quite a bit of effort and time. An expense that goes into that process as well. When we started the company, my partner and I were individually bottling honey at night in our kitchens. Um, quite literally, you know, take the bottle, fill it up, put it here, put a put a label on it, and we're to the point now where we're into the thousands and, and thousands of pounds and gallons of honey. Uh, so we're working with an organization here in town, uh, working with their community of developmentally disabled individuals, DDI, folks who are actually doing that for us. It's a great and I think very purposeful thing that they can be doing. They also then keep a certain portion of that honey and they use that uh, to generate income both for the organization and and themselves. So you might find our honey at a farmer's market uh, being sold by the folks who bottled it on our behalf. uh, And they then get, you know, they have not only the uh, the, the purpose and the pride of having been involved in that activity, but also they get to keep some of the funds in. Are they paid to bottle it as well? They, it's, it's supported through government programs is the best way to say it. All right. Well, we're happy. I'll close it off there, but um, thank you for joining us. And we would love to talk more. So please come up or find us out there. Thank you guys so very much. Thank you.